Well, good morning. morning. We're going to begin with a little uh, chorus this morning. And so uh, I don't know if you'll know the song Shout to the Lord, but that was one I thought we could sing this morning. You, several people should be familiar with that. Okay, good. Let's, let's, uh, let's stand this morning and just uh, sing this as, a, as our opening chorus. And then uh, uh, Kyle will bring the announcements and we'll get on with the rest of the service. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge. All that I have never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us see power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. The mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you forever. Stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Thank you so much, and welcome to worship at First Baptist Church of Verdon. We're glad you could all be with us to sing songs of praise. Uh, to pray to the Lord our God and to open up his word and see what he has to tell us today. If you look in your bulletins, you can see some of the opportunities we have going on this week. Um, today, after the service, uh, we will have a, a benevolent offering. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, as our deacons board, one of our jobs is we help people in the community whenever they come to us with something like if if they can't pay a bill or something, somebody that's in, in need. And we, we collect funds to be able to give money to these people so they can get by with whatever they, they want whenever we look at their, their case and see what it is they need. So today after worship, we will be having a special benevolent offering. If you have anything extra and, and feel led to give, um, we'll be in the back there as you leave. Um, and I, I ask you to consider that, um, especially to know that it's going to help people in our community. So... And we will try and make an announcement whenever we, we do give something out about that, of how your money has gone to help someone, uh, someone in our community that, that's struggling. Also, this Wednesday at 6 p.m., we have our Valentine's Supper and party for church members. This is a fun, fun thing of the year where the youth group will serve the adults. We have a meal 
What is the meal? Do we know? Stroganoff. Stroganoff, uh, which is a, a hit. Green so beans. green beans, all that good stuff. Um, please RSVP to Janice today if you can, if you want to come and have a meal um, and a, a good time where we can all get together and hang out. Other than that, you can see the stuff in the bulletin, the other opportunities we have this week. Are there any announcements that we missed that aren't in there that we need to cover? If not, birthdays and anniversaries, happy birthday on Thursday to Remy Scott. So happy birthday to Remy. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? Our call to worship today says, On this Sunday before Ash Wednesday, Lord, help us plan our Lenten journey. Grant us more love and more holiness that we may glorify you. Will you stand and sing with me hymn number 215, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. may be seated. At this time, it's not in your bulletin, but we're going to have Helen come up and, and do a missions moment right before the kids. <laughs> you have your uh, envelope and information in your uh, bulletin uh, for our um, America for Christ offering. Um, American Baptist Home Mission Societies is promoting the America for Christ offering, which seeks to raise $1,500,000 to support American Baptist mission and ministry across the United States and Puerto Rico. The theme for the offering is comes from Lamentations 3, 22, and 23. Because of God's great love, we are consumed for God's Compassion never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We will be um, taking up this offering uh, the rest of this month and also in uh, March. And uh, 5% of our general offering 
goes to this fund, as well as whatever comes in from the envelopes. Um, this, uh, these offerings um, is to help partner with churches, American Baptist churches, community groups, and seminaries and institutions to financial support them. I think you you uh, will be seeing a little bit more uh, videos on the, on this also. All right, thank you, Helen. Now the kids can come up. Now there's more. I tried to put some in my hair this morning, but it wouldn't stick. It just kept falling off. <laughs> oh, let's see. I was going to do a song with you that uh, is from a, a verse in the New Testament in, in the first epistle of John. And uh, but first, I'm going to I'll, I'll tell you why I thought of it, that particular verse of scripture. I'm going to be talking with the adults this morning about. Uh, the time that Jesus took three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, up into a high mountain. And while he was up in the mountain with his three disciples, all of a sudden, <clears throat> they're looking at Jesus. And all of a sudden, his face starts shining and all of his clothes start glowing. <clears throat> Can you imagine being with somebody and, and that would happen? They weren't with just anybody. They were with Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then if that wasn't enough, while his clothes are all shining <laughs> and watching him, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they see two other people just suddenly show up, and they're not just anybody. They're Elijah and Moses. Do you remember hearing about Elijah and Moses in, in the Bible? <clears throat> well, here they are, and they had lived hundreds of years before, <laughs> And all of a sudden, they're standing there on this mountain talking with Jesus, and the disciples are just kind of shocked. And uh, then, on top of that, all of a sudden, a cloud kind of comes over this, this place where they're standing with Jesus and with Elijah and Moses, and a voice comes out of the cloud, and you know what the voice says? It says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. It was the voice of God telling Peter, James, and John <clears throat> that this was God's beloved son, Jesus. They just knew him as Jesus, their rabbi, but he was more than that. And he, God is saying, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And so they did listen to him, continued to follow him. And that's why today we believe in Jesus because those first apostles shared the stories of Jesus and told the good news of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Now, the verse I was talking about in, in uh, 1 John says this. It says, Behold what manner of love, or what kind of love, the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Remember God said, This is my beloved Son. But by believing in Jesus, we also become beloved children of God. So behold what manner of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the children of God of God. Okay, so that's the little chorus I'll teach you. And I've got this really nifty pick that sticks to my guitar. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> now I, now I can't, don't have an excuse for losing my guitar picks. <laughs> this is how the song goes. It's a pretty easy little chorus. To, that's a little bit too loud. It says, Behold, oh, that's too high of a key. I could sing it in that key when I was younger, and now my voice is too low. Let me find a better key. Better than this key. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Let's sing that again. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. And it says, That we should be called the children of God. That we 
should be called the children of God. Can you remember those words? Let's try it again. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the children of God. That we should be called the children of God. All because Jesus came and lived for us and died for us on the cross. Not only is he the beloved son of God, but we too are beloved children of God by putting our faith and our trust in Jesus. Lord, I just ask for your blessing on these children this morning that they may continue all their lives to believe in your beloved son, Jesus, and may their faith grow and deepen, become stronger, and may they continue just to become the people that you call them to be. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you all. The kids can be dismissed to Children's Church with Miss Debbie. At this time, if our ushers would prepare for this morning's offering. Will you all stand? Father God, we come for you, come to you with grateful hearts, Lord. Help us to, to understand that all these gifts that we have, all the, the luxuries that we own are a gift from you. Father, help us to, to see your glory in all the things that we do. And Lord, I pray that you bless this money um, and, and that you help us to, to show us how to, how to spend your money, how to help others with it, how to grow your kingdom uh, through these gifts that we're given, Lord. Father, help us never to take for granted the things we have. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Amen. If you will remain standing, let's sing hymn number 223, I Stand Amazed. So stand and sing, I Stand Amazed. <laughs>
may be seated. At this time, we're going to come to our time of praises and prayer concerns. All right, well, let's, let's go to prayer here, and I'm, I'll have you guys pray silently uh, first, and then I'll lead us in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for all that we have, Lord. Uh, we thank you for, for this time we have to be here together, and we, I pray that we glorify you in it, Lord. Father, we come to you with, with hearts that are heavy um, and happy. Lord, we, we're thankful for the babies that we see being born. Lord, we pray that you, you hold them in your arms and help us to know how to be there for them and their families uh, should we need to. And, and Lord, I pray that that we can raise these children in a, a way that glorifies you. Father, for the, the people who are, are hurting, for the, the people that, that are, have sicknesses uh, between cancer and infections and sickness, Jerry and Della, Travis, Ruby, uh, Paula, Lord, I pray that, that you give them strength to get through these things that, that they have. Lord, give them, them wisdom and comfort more than anything else as they... They make decisions on what what's going to happen with their lives going forward. And Lord, help them to, to be able to have faith in you, to see that ultimately that, that you have a plan for us that doesn't involve this sickness and this tragedy. Lord, we thank you for the, uh, all the time that we get to spend here together, Lord. And we do pray for the people uh, that have new jobs, that are looking at jobs to take. Lord, give them discernment and wisdom, and Lord, help them to glorify you in the work they do. Lord, help glorify me in the work I do, and help me be grateful for that. Father, as we go through and we listen to to the sermon today, Father, I pray that you touch our hearts. Lord, open our minds and our hearts and connect the two to see you clearly, Lord, to see your kingdom and to see the glory that you have and the glory that you promise us. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. All right. At this time, we're going to have a pastor come up and deliver our message. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate that. Thanks for leading us in this worship service this morning. I don't know about you. I have a weird memory for certain dates, and uh, this morning I, I just realized that uh, it was 60 years ago today that my grandpa Adams died, and. Uh, and the reason I remember that is because his funeral was on Valentine's Day. I was in the fourth grade. I was uh, 10 years old. And uh, somebody brought me a bag of uh, the Valentine's. After, you know, you used to exchange Valentine's in, in class. And so somebody brought me a, a bag of my whatever, 28 or 29 <laughs> Valentine's because I was at my grandpa's funeral that morning. And so uh, uh, I guess I just made me start thinking about... Uh, how long life is and, and yet how short life is. When I think about how quickly, you know, 60 years just seems like, you know, when you think just uh, objectively, I think, well, 60 years, that's a long time. Yet I remember just so clearly standing in my folks' yard and getting that bag of uh, Valentine's. It's just, uh, life is strange, isn't it? Uh, um, this morning, I want to uh, share with you about. Uh, the event I was talking to the kids about this morning, the Transfiguration of Jesus. This is uh, uh, Transfiguration Sunday, and uh, many congregations this morning around the world will be uh, hearing the same story that I'm going to share with you uh, from Mark's Gospel about the, the Transfiguration of Jesus. And while I, when I do preach on a lectionary text, you know, one of the suggested texts for any particular Sunday in the, in the church year. I, I usually don't read all of the text. There's usually like a yeah, psalm. There'll be a short text from the prophets. Then there'll be a gospel reading. There'll be an epistle reading. And then those can take a little bit of time. And I, So normally I just pick one or two texts. But this morning, the, the, the texts are so rich and so uh, interconnected with what happened uh, with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, that I, I hope you won't mind if I take the time to read them. It won't, it won't take too much time, but it'll it'll take a little bit of our time. But time spent in the Word of God is uh, 
time well spent. And so I think of the words of Augustine who said about the scriptures that there are streams in them in which lambs may wade and rivers in which elephants may swim. And uh, the scriptures we're going to read this morning are uh, more like rivers than shallow streams. And I just want the, the word of God to speak for itself to us this morning. And then I'll try to keep my remarks uh, somewhat brief. But I'm going to share with you, first of all, uh, the first uh, suggested reading for this Transfiguration Sunday is found in Exodus chapter 34. And I'm going to begin reading at verse 29. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of the testimony in his hand as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. And when Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation turned, returned to him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he had commanded, the people of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses would put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. The second Old Testament reading is found in the second book of Kings. And I, I think I heard Gloria say that you're going to be covering second Kings in, in the Zoom Bible study. Well, here's a little preview. Second Kings chapter 2. Now when the Lord was about to take Elisha, Eli, excuse me, was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Tarry here, I pray you, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Hold your peace. Elijah said to him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray you, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Hold your peace. Then Elijah said to him, Tarry here, I pray you, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other till the two of them should go over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, I pray you, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. We turn then to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. And he said to them, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples, 
Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his garments became glistening, intensely white, as no fuller on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking to Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three booths, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were exceedingly afraid. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly looking around them, they no longer saw anyone with him but Jesus only. The final reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians chapter 3. Beginning to read at verse 7. Now if the dispensation of death carved in letters on stone came with such splendor that the Israelites could not look at Moses' face because of its brightness fading as this was, will not the dispensation of the Spirit be attended with greater splendor? For if there was splendor in the dispensation of condemnation, the dispensation of righteousness must far exceed it in splendor. Indeed, in this case, what once had splendor has come to have no splendor at all because of the splendor that surpasses it. For if what faded away came with splendor, what is permanent must have much more splendor. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not see the end of the fading splendor, but their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when a man turns to the Lord... The veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being changed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word this morning. From the law, from the prophets, From the Gospels, from the Epistles, Lord, we thank you that every word of Scripture is inspired by you, is breathed out by your Holy Spirit, and is profitable for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. And so, Lord, may you bless your word to our hearts this morning and help us with unveiled faces to behold your glory this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's no accident that the two men who accompany, the three men rather, who accompany Jesus up the mountain are Peter, James, and John, the inner circle of disciples. And it's no accident that the two men who appear to the disciples, who show up and stand there with Jesus and talk with him, are Elijah and Moses. Moses being the representative of the law, and Elijah, of course, being uh, sort of the representative of of the prophets, the, the maybe the greatest of the prophets, it says they appeared with him in glory. And Luke adds an interesting little note. Luke says that they appeared with him in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. How strange it must have been for Peter and James and John <laughs> to be witnessing this, this scene unfold on that mountain with Jesus glowing, clothes and all, and then seeing Elijah and Moses show up and start having a conversation with maybe what was Jesus saying to them? Maybe he was saying, how do you like heaven so far? I don't know what he was saying to them, but I know what they were saying to him. They wanted to know all about his pending death in Jerusalem, what he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem soon because their salvation as well as ours hinged on what Jesus was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Now, what exactly happened to Jesus that day, we really don't know. Uh, We can only just kind of step back and try to imagine what it would have been like for Peter, James, and John, and to just bow 
in reverence at the things we cannot really fully grasp in the scriptures. All three of the evangelists, this story is, is related in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and it, and it seems as you read the passages, they all are groping for the words to describe what Jesus experienced and what these three disciples experienced. And that's so true often in the scriptures. The scriptures are, are, are words on pages, and yet God can breathe life into those words. Jesus said, the words I speak to you are spirit and our life. I want to share just three uh, brief observations about the transfiguration of Jesus with you this morning. First of all, the transfiguration of Jesus did something important for Jesus. It did something important for Jesus as he received confirmation from God the Father about his divine sonship. When God said, this is my beloved son, listen to him, it also was confirmation about Jesus' resolve to lay down his life, to go on to Jerusalem and to lay down his life for the sins of the world, for all who would believe in him for forgiveness and eternal life. This is how our salvation was procured, by what Jesus did for us on the cross. And the songs we sang this morning allude to that work of Jesus on the cross. Secondly, the transfiguration of Jesus did something important for Peter, James, and John because they had just heard Jesus say before they went up the mountain, the last thing Jesus was talking about was that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. The experience with Jesus on the mountain confirmed for them that they were not following just an ordinary rabbi, but they were, they were following the divine Son of God, the Savior of the world. Because following Jesus, when they came down from the mountain, you know, Peter wanted to just stay there. Let's just build three tabernacles. He said, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and let's just stay on this mountain. You ever had a mountain top experience with God? You want to stay there, don't you? But it doesn't, it's not meant to last. It's meant to give you a preview of coming attractions. And that's what Peter and James and John received that day on the mountain, a preview of coming attractions. Following Jesus was about to get much tougher when they came down from the mountain because they were on their way to Jerusalem where Jesus was going to be arrested, beaten, and crucified. Thirdly, the transfiguration of Jesus can do something important for each one of us who take the time to connect the dots in all of these scriptures that we've heard this morning. Paul states the case well. He says, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face to conceal the splendor that eventually faded, we who believe in Jesus, Paul says, are heirs to a splendor that will not fade. In fact, we are heirs to a splendor that will increase. It will become more glowing with time and especially with eternity. When a man or a woman or even a child turns to the Lord Jesus Christ, the veil between that person and God is removed. doesn't matter if it's one of these children who come up and sing songs or any one of us. When any one of us turn to the Lord, the veil that Paul is talking about is removed. The Father and the Son send the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts. We become vessels of the Holy Spirit. And we behold as in a mirror, Paul says, the glory of the Lord. Not only that, but we are changed into that glory. Now, an interesting little detail in the, in the New Testament is that the word Mark uses when Jesus is transfigured is the word from which we get metamorphosis. It's a change from one form into another. Paul uses this same word when he says that we all with unveiled faces beholding 
the glory of the Lord are being transformed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, Paul says, there is freedom. There's freedom from sin's curse. There's freedom from the fear of death and how fearful people are of dying because they have no clue what's on the other side. Some say when you're dead, you're dead. That's If you're not a Christian, when you're dead is dead is about the best case scenario you can hope for, isn't it? But we're freed from that fear of death because we do know what's on the other side because, as that old song says, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. And finally, we're freed to live on God's good earth in his constant presence and care. Spending time with Jesus Christ will change you. It will transform you into something different than you were before. What happened to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration is a preview of what awaits all of us as believers in Jesus. Moses' face shone after spending 40 days on the mountain with God. Actually, it was his, his second 40 days. You remember, if you read the Exodus, he went up on the mountain for 40 days the first time, came down with the tablets of stone, only to find that a party was going on. And his brother Aaron had decided to make a golden calf for everybody to worship. How nice of Aaron. And Moses was so enraged that he threw the tablets to the ground. And then, for the cocktail, he ground up the golden calf and made everybody drink it. Now, the Bible says Moses was the meekest of all men who ever lived on the face of the earth, but he wasn't meek (laughs) when he came down from the mountain. He turns around and goes back up the mountain for 40 more days, didn't eat any food, didn't drink any water for 40 days. God, again, with his own finger, the Bible says, wrote again the words on those tables of stone, and Moses carried those back down the mountain after 40 days, and his face was glowing. He didn't even know it. But when he came down, the people saw him, and they're freaking out because Moses is suddenly glowing, and they're afraid to even come close to him. Moses' face shone after 40 days with God. Can you imagine what will happen when we spend eternity with God? What will that be like for us? What's going to happen to us when we enter into the very presence of God? Well, this is what John says, and I was singing with the kids this morning. Behold, what kind of love God has given to us that we, be, we, that we should be called as children, and yet we are. And he says, Behold, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. In the meantime, we do well to hear that voice that came out of the cloud on that mountain, the voice that Peter, James, and John heard. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. This is our calling as disciples of Jesus Christ, to hear his voice, and to follow him. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. We follow, and he leads us, and we are transformed the more we behold him, day by day, in worship, when we gather and sing songs, when we read the word of God, when we pray, we are being changed. We are being transformed. Our faces aren't necessarily glowing, but our spirits are because we're in the presence of God and the spirit of God indwells us.
May God give us the grace to be changed more and more into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand together in closing and sing hymn number 408, I Surrender All. And let let this song be more than just a song that we sing, but let it become our prayer in closing this morning. I know it's Super Bowl Sunday, but let me offer this invitation to you sometime today. If you have a hymnal at home, and if you don't, take one of these home with you if you you need to. But that fourth verse, at some point today, in the quiet of your life, in the presence of God, pray this fourth verse. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with your love and power. Let your blessing fall on me and see what happens. Father in heaven, we thank you for your presence in our lives. Thank you for your love and care for us. Thank you for your beloved son, our Lord Jesus. And Lord, it is our privilege as well as our calling to continue to listen to him, to continue in his word that we may be his true disciples and know the truth and in knowing that truth, be set free. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.